Hello, dear students. We are reading chapter 8, Silk Road, written by Nick Middleton. And the story so far, the author, he wanted to go to Mount Kailash to complete the Kora. So he hired Sitan to drive him up to Mount Kailash. And uh, he was along with his friend, Daniel. So they were at the moment at Ravu, a place called Ravu. And as a farewell gift, Lamo gave him a long sleeved sheepskin coat. Then he took Daniel as his companion till Darshan. So when they started the journey, Sitan took a shortcut to the southwest, which was a direct route to Mount Kailash. They wanted to cut off from Changtang, and that's why he took the shortcut. So they had to cross the high mountain passes to reach their destination. Sitan assured him that it would be no problem if there would be no snow there. So they crossed through few gazelles, a herd of wild asses and shepherds tending the flock. So we have read up to this part. Now we will continue from here. Yes. So let's start reading, students. We will start from page 75, second paragraph. So as hills started to push up once more from the rocky wilderness, we passed solitary drogbas tending their flocks. Sometimes men, sometimes women, these well-wrapped figures would pause and stare at our car, occasionally waving as we passed. When the track took us close to their animals, the sheep would take evasive action, veering away from the speeding vehicle. So as the author, along with his companion Daniel and driver Sethan, as they moved past the rocky area, they came across some drogbas, that means some shepherds who were nurturing their group of birds. So they also met both men and women who were staring at their car and some also waved at them. Kuch aurte thi, kuch mard the vaha par, aur wo unki gaadi ko dekh rahe the, they were staring at them. And as they moved closer to the animals, the sheep would take a slippery path. They would try to avoid the vehicle and they took evasive action and would suddenly move into another direction away from the car. So when they saw the car approaching them, they just changed their course of direction. So veering away from the speeding vehicle means turning away from the vehicle. So we passed nomads, dark tents, pitched in splendid isolation, usually with a huge black dog, a Tibetan mastiff standing guard. So as they moved further, they witnessed nomads' tents, which were dark in complete isolation and big black Tibetan dogs standing as their guard. So, when they grow a little further, they show who they are showing? The nomads, the gypsies, the people who travel from one place to another. They show dark tents. They were pitched in splendid isolation. That means complete isolation. There was human habitation that was very low and they were put in tents. And their tents were being guarded by the dog, huge black dog, a Tibetan mastiff as a guard there. So these bees would cock their head, their great big heads when they become aware of our approach and fix us in their sights. As we continued to draw closer, they would explode into action, speeding directly towards us like a bullet from a gun and nearly as fast. So the author says that how these shaggy monsters, these dogs, they fixed their gaze on the approaching car and they also ran behind it as just like a bullet being fired, fired from a gun. So the dogs who guard were guarding, their were fixed, they were constantly gazing at the car which was approaching them. So as they drew closer, they were into the action and they started following it and then the following the speed of the dogs is compared to the bullet being fired from a gun that means they were very fast they started speeding towards their car so the author says 
these shaggy monsters blacker than the darkest night usually bore bright red collars and barked furiously with massive jaws they were completely fearless of our vehicle shooting straight into our path causing seethan to break and swerve so ye jo author jo hai in dogs ko kya pukarte hain shaggy monsters ye jo dogs the they were very huge in size so as they approach these creatures they were blacker than the normal black color so wo kehte hain ki inka jo rang tha wo kaale rang se bhi zyada gehra kaala tha and they wore collars jo ki bright red color ke the to unke jo gale mein collar pehna hua tha wo bahut hi bright red color ka tha and they bark angrily at them big big jaws wo bahut hi furiously bark kar rahe the they were completely fearless to jab unki jo gaadi thi as it was approaching them they were not afraid of the car and they were also not running away from it instead they were running towards the car car and thus causing seethan to apply brakes and change the direction suddenly so seethan ko jab wo dogs jo hain unki car ki taraf seedhe chale aa rahe the seethan ko suddenly brake apply karni padti hai aur direction change karna padta hai swerve means to turn to change direction the dog would make chase for 100 meters or so before easing off having seen us off the property so author kya kehte hain the dogs they ran after their vehicle for 100 meters more and then they stopped there to watch her, that the author to go away crossing their periphery unki jo property ka unka jo ilaka tha when their car it crossed their area they stopped there and they kept on looking at them it wasn't difficult to understand why ferocious tibetan mastiffs became popular in china's imperial courts as hunting dogs brought along the silk road in ancient times as tribute from tibet so author kya kehte hain ki ye jo mastiff hain ye jo dogs hain they became popular in china's royal court as hunting dogs so unke is ferocious nature ki wajah se these dogs were very popular in china and they were brought along the silk route as a tribute in ancient times from tibet so as a tribute ye jo the dogs ye laaye gaye the dusre ilakon mein aur is tarah se ye bahut famous the and they became an important uh, part of this china's royal court by now we could see snow capped mountains gathering on the horizon we entered a valley where the river was wide and mostly clogged with ice brilliant white and glinting in the sunshine the trail hugged its bank twisting with the meanders as we gradually gained height and the valley sides closed in so the author is now describing the picturesque view of the area from where he was passing so he says that after crossing those tibetan dogs they started witnessing snow capped mountains dur se unko jo pahad the wo barf se dhake hue the uh, and they could see it very clearly they entered the valley which was covered with wide river covered with ice which was white and shiny in the sun सो उस वैली में जो नदी थी उनके जो रास्ते के साथ साथ जो नदी थी वो बर्फ से ढकी हुई थी और वो चमक रही थी द आइस वॉज इट वॉज शाइनिंग ब्राइट इन द सन शाइन द ट्रैक वॉज मूविंग अलॉन्ग द रिवर बैंक सो एज दे गेंड हाइट द वैली वॉज क्लोजिंग इन टूवर्ड्स दैम द पाथ बिकेम मोर नैरोवर तो जैसे जैसे वैली की ओर वो बढ़ने लगे उनका जो रास्ता था वो और संकरा होता गया नैरो होता चला गया the turn became sharper and the ride bumpier seethan now in third gear as we continued to climb so the turns they were bhi bahut steep hote chale gaye sharper hote chale gaye ride bumpier because now the road was quite stony pathrila rasta tha and seethan had to drive his car at the third gear as they started to climb the the track moved away from the icy river laboring through the steeper slopes that sported big rocks daubed with patches of bright orange lichen beneath the rock hunks of snow clung on in the near permanent shade i felt the pressure building up in my ears held my nose knotted and cleared them we struggled round another tight bend 
and then Satan stopped. So the author, he says that the driver, he was driving in the third gear. So while the turns were sharper, the ride was bumpier. And then they moved away from the road which ran along the icy river. It had sharp slopes and big rocks coated with thick, sticky orange lichen. Lichen is a kind of slow-growing plant which grows on walls, trees, rocks. green plants So that had grown in those rocks. And below the rocks were chunks of snow. And the author felt at the time pressure building on his ears. So he held his nose and he snorted in order to clear his ears and the driver he kept on moving then came a sharp turn and Sitan he stopped his car there he had opened his door and jumped out of his seat before I realized what was going on snow said Daniel as he too exited the vehicle letting in a branch of cold air as he did so so Sitan he stopped his car and he jumped out of out from his seat so Daniel too, he did the same. He also came out of the car and he exclaimed snow in his excitement and uh, worry we can see because raste par jo thi, barf jami hui thi. So a swathe of white stuff lay across the track in front of us, stretching for maybe 15 meters before it pittered out and the dirt trail reappeared. So swathe of white stuff means a long track of snow was in front of them, which was about 15 meters long before it diminished and the normal dirty track appeared again. So 15 meter tak ka jo distance tha waha par snow thi and ye chinta ka vishay is liye tha kyunki snow par gaadi chalana thoda difficult hota hai, car slip ho sakti hai. So the snow was on both sides of them and it was difficult to move the vehicle in that condition. So the snow continued on either side of us, smoothing the abrupt bank on the upslope side. The bank was too steep for our vehicle to scale, so there was no way round the snow patch. I joined Daniel as Seaton stepped on to the encrusted snow and began to slither and slide forward, stamping his foot from time to time to ascertain how sturdy it was. I looked at my wristwatch. We were at 5,210 meters above sea level. So as the snow was on both sides of them, it was difficult to move the vehicle in that condition. So the author, he joined Daniel as Seaton. He tried to move, move smoothly over the snow surface and he started stamping his foot on the surface. The protagonist, he saw his wristwatch. The author, when he saw his wristwatch, he observed that they were somewhere at 5,210 meters above the sea level. Jo high altitude hota hai usse, samundar ki uh, surface se maapa jata hai. So, Above sea level, they were somewhere at 5,210 meters above. The snow did not look too deep to me, but the danger wasn't its depth. So, author kya kehte hai? Jo snow thi, wo utna parishan nahi kar rahi thi. Or, uh, uh, so, it did not look too deep to him. But the danger, uska jo depth tha, snow ka depth geharai danger wali baat nahi thi. Daniel kya kehta hai? So much as its icy top layer. So Daniel kya kehta hai ki snow ki jo geharai thi, jo depth thi, it was not of so much worry. The thing that disturbed him was the surface, the top layer of the snow. He said if we slip off, the car would turn over. He suggested as we saw Seaton grab handfuls of dirt and fling them across the frozen surface. So Daniel, he told the author that the car could slip. It could turn over if they were not careful at the time. And uh, the author saw Seaton grabbing some handfuls of dirt and then flinging them across the frozen surface. So, author ne kya dekha ki Seaton ne apne haathon mein mitti utha liye and he was just spreading the dirt over the icy surface. Jo patch tha ice ka, barfila jo rasta tha, Seaton us par mitti 
छिड़कने लगा सो वेन द स्नो वॉज स्प्रेड विद दॉयल डैनियल एंड आई स्टेड आउट ऑफ द व्हीकल टू लाइट एंड सी तंस लोड so when the work was done the author and daniel they both decided that they would not sit in the car just to lighten the load so he backed up and drove towards the dirty snow eased the car on to its icy surface and then slowly drove its length without apparent difficulty so thus they drove around the snowy track which was steep and filled with rocks and then he further kept on driving the car and slowly they in a comfortable manner they came to the other side of the road they crossed the snowy patch of that was there on the road so bina kisi difficulty ke sitan ne dheere dheere jo hai wo car bahar nikal li us snowy patch mein se 10 minutes later we stopped at another blockage not good sir sitan announced as he jumped out again to survey the scene but कुछ ही दूरी पर गए थे दस मिनट बाद सीतन ही स्टॉप द कार अगेन बिकॉज दे वॉज अनदर ऑब्स्टेकल देयर इन फ्रंट ऑफ दम एंड दस सीतन ही सेट दैट दिस वॉज नॉट गुड दिस टाइम ही डिसाइडेड टू ट्राई एंड ड्राइव राउंड द स्नो सो सीतन लेकिन वहां रुकता नहीं है ही डिसाइडेड दैट ही वुड ड्राइव अराउंड द स्नो सो they drove around the snowy track which was steep and filled with rocks to wo uske side se hokar guzarne ki koshish karte hain jo kafi patreela tha wahan par kafi sare bade bade patthar bhi the so the slope was steep and studded with major rocks wahan par kafi patthar the wahan par steep tha wo kafi dhalan bhi thi jahan se jana quite risky bhi tha but somehow sitan negotiated them his four wheel drive vehicle lurching from one obstacle to the next in so doing he cut off one of the hairpin bends regaining the trail further up where the snow had not drifted hairpin bend jaise aapne hairpin dekha hoga uske bend jo hai bilkul u sa bend hota hai so sitan he drove efficiently through that area he negotiated them means he dealt them properly aur bahut hi kushalta se usne apni gaadi ko us raste se nikala So, उसने एक पॉइंट पर बहुत ही स्टीप एंड था बिल्कुल हेयर पिन बेंड था उसने उसको भी बहुत कुशलता से पार कर लिया रीगेनिंग द ट्रेल फर्दर अप द स्नो हैड नॉट ड्रिफ्टेड सो जहां पर काफी वहां से उसको मूविंग हायर साइड वेद स्नो वॉज स्टिल देयर बर्फ जो थी वहां पर अभी भी थी लेकिन फिर भी वो उस रास्ते को बहुत ही ध्यान से कवर करके आगे निकल आता है I checked my watch again as we continued to climb in the bright sunshine we crept past 5400 meters and my head began to throb horribly I took gulps from my water bottle which is supposed to help a rapid ascent so after crossing that trail of track author he again checked his watch and he saw that there were 5004 meters above the sea level and his head began to throb horribly unhe uneasy feel hone laga aur is wajah se unhone apni bottle se thoda sa pani piya he thought that this would definitely help him we finally reached the top of the pass at 5515 meters it was marked by a large cairn of rocks festooned with white silk scarves and ragged prayer flags so finally wo उस जो पास था जहां से वो गुजर रहे थे उसके टॉप पर पहुंचते हैं और जो ऊंचाई है वो है 5,500 मीटर्स एंड ये जो रास्ता था इट वाज मार्क बाय अ लार्ज ग्रुप ऑफ रॉक्स वहां बहुत बड़े बड़े पत्थर थे एंड फेस्टून मींस डेकोरेटेड विद व्हाइट सिल्क कार्स एंड रैगेड प्रे फ्लैग्स तो वहां पर बहुत ही लार्ज पाइल ऑफ स्टोन था एंड दो डेकोरेटेड विद सिल्क स्कॉ एंड सम डी प्रेयर फ्लैग्स तो दैट मीन्स वहां से काफी पिलग्रमेज गुजर चुके थे और इसलिए वो रास्ता जो था इस तरह की चीजों से काफी डेकोरेटेड था पर वो जो डेकोरेशन थी काफी पुरानी हो चुकी थी वी ऑल टू कट टर्न राउंड द केयर इन अ क्लॉक वाइज डिरेक्शन एज इज द ट्रेडिशन एंड सीतन चेक द टायर्स ऑन इज व्हीकल ही स्टॉप एट द पेट्रोल टैंक एंड पार्शली अनस्क्रूड द टॉप विच एमिटेड अ लाउड हिस्स द लोअर एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेशर वॉज अलाउविंग द फ्यूल टू एक्सपैंड इट साउंडेड डेंजरस टू मी मे बी सर सीतन लाव बट नो स्मोकिंग सो uh they took the turn of that uh, stone that was there jo patreela rasta tha jo bade bade is patthar wahan par the wo clockwise direction se usko cross karte hain 
and then the driver he checked the tires of the vehicle and he stopped at the petrol tank while he was exa examining the vehicle usne petrol tank ka jo dhakkan hai use khola and a loud hiss could be heard because jo pressure tha wahan par atmospheric pressure tha it was making the fuel to expand aur isliye hissing si sound aa rahi thi so uh, driver jo tha wo उसे बताता है कि ये खतरनाक भी हो सकता है बट ही लाफ्ट ही मेड अ जोक बाय सेइंग नो स्मोकिंग एट द टाइम सो सीतन जो है वो मजाक करते हुए कहता है कि हाँ खतरा तो है बट प्लीज डू नॉट स्मोक सो स्टूडेंट्स वी विल स्टॉप हियर टुडे विल कंटिन्यू द चैप्टर इन द नेक्स्ट सेशन थैंक यू ऑल कीप रीडिंग